Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.5 beta 4 release today to developers on all iOS 16 supported devices. iOS 16.5 beta 4 is out to developers and soon to public beta testers as it releases at the same time everywhere around the world and is available for the iPhone 8, 8 plus and newer up to the 14 pro max as far as the betas go. Now this came in at a fairly small 403 megabytes on my iPhone 14 pro max. It was about three to 400 megabytes megabytes on all the devices we have here. Along with this, Apple also released quite a few different betas and updates with iPadOS 16.5 beta 4, macOS 11.7.7 RC4, macOS 12.6.6 RC4, macOS 13.4 beta 4, as well as watchOS 9.5 beta 4, tvOS 16.5 beta 4, along with HomePodOS 16.5 beta 4. Lots of different beta updates available today. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 20F5059A. We're down to the A at the end, which used to mean that we're very close to an RC or release candidate. That seems to make sense since we're on beta four. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Now, as far as what's new in this update, well, there is a few things that are new. However, there is no new modem update. So if you were updating from beta three to beta four, it's the same no modem update with 1.70.02. So no changes there. That doesn't mean they can't improve cellular at all, but it's been pretty good in general. As far as new features are concerned, well, there's one change that you can physically see that I was able to find. And if you go to your lock screen or to go to your wallpaper section, go to add a wallpaper, you can see with beta three on the left and beta four on the right, they've actually added a new section for pride wallpapers. It says designed with the colors of the pride flag to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community. So they're just separating these. I would like to see more and more of these categories, maybe for iOS six wallpaper, all the way up to what we have now, iOS 13, 14, something like that would be very welcome. So they're just making it easier to categorize as we do expect new pride watch faces and watch bands, according to some things found in the code by Aaron P 613. So those things should be expected very soon. It makes sense that they're adding them now getting ready for that. Also a new feature today for some people in Guatemala and El Salvador is the ability to use Apple pay that's available now. And you don't need to have iOS 16.5 betas for that. It should be available on 16.5. 4.1. Now, as far as other things, well, there are mentions of the ability to set up an identity in your Apple wallet, meaning maybe new States will be added soon, or you'll be able to add your license in general. We don't really know, but if we go into wallet and we go to add a card, we can go to driver's license or state ID. And we only have three options. This is because in the United States, those States have to support this and work with Apple to actually add that. So we could see more States very soon, as well as maybe some other options such as colleges and more that we're already seeing. Also, if you're using an Apple watch and you want to use the beta, they changed this last time with software update where you now have the option to switch between a beta. They've also changed some of the wording here as well. So if we go into that, you can see here with the wording, it says receive beta versions of watch OS, which let you test drive the latest features on your Apple watch and provide feedback. Prior to this, it actually said receive beta updates on your Apple watch to test drive pre-release versions of watch OS and provide feedback to help make Apple software even better. So again, as they do every single time, they actually update just wording within the code and throughout the OS. Apple also updated the MagSafe charger today. This was updated with a new firmware version from version 255.0.0.0 to 258.0.0.0. To see that, go into your settings, go to general, then about. Under Apple MagSafe charger, you can see the firmware version of 255.0.0.0. This will update on its own. I'll just leave it connected, let it update, and it will update usually within about 15 minutes or so. We don't know what's actually contained within it, but it should update and hopefully maybe it'll improve the sensors within within it that actually keep the device cool or handle the overall power going to the phone itself. So either way, we don't really know what's new in it, but they've actually updated it. So if you have one, just connect it to your device and it should update on its own. Right after Apple released the MagSafe charger update, they also released a firmware update for AirPods. It's available for AirPods 2, AirPods 3, AirPods Pro, AirPods Pro 2, and AirPods Max. The new version is 5E135. So to check the version you're currently on, go into your settings, then wait for them to connect, tap on settings, and then within settings, tap on your AirPods, scroll to the bottom, and you can actually see the version number. 
Currently I'm on 5E133, the new one is 5E135. So I'll have to update these, figure out what's new, but typically just connect them like this, plug them into the charger and set your phone down, lock your phone, close the AirPods, walk away, come back in about 15 minutes and they're typically updated. Once I find what's new, I'll have a separate video on that. As far as things that they fixed, well, last time they fixed the duplicate wallpaper bug. Now there's still bugs remaining though. We still have the spotlight bug where you pull down and sometimes this doesn't work properly. It doesn't pop up the search box. And I wasn't able to duplicate that on my 14 Pro Max, but it does show up on the 11 sometimes. Once in a while where you swipe down to bring that up, it just brings up nothing and then the keyboard shows up. So right now it's working properly. If we go to the lock screen and do the same, that seems to be working. So sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. Also, there's an issue with notifications still. They haven't fixed that glitch. If you swipe it off the screen and back, you can see it's very glitchy. It doesn't respond as you would expect. So it's not working properly. And also I still have that issue in medicine or under the health app within medicine. If we go to medicine, go to medications and under the log area, if I tap on one, it will crash the app. I've actually submitted feedback for this and hopefully they resolve this soon. If we go into the feedback app, we can take a look at the recent notes. You can see the feedback while well, it just disappeared, but there's feedback there that I submitted within the notes. They haven't really updated this much at all. They've resolved all the issues they've mentioned and you'll see here fixed accessory pairing by shared administrators will fail if home hubs are running versions prior to the TVOS 16.5 beta. So they've resolved a bunch of issues and added the new feature where a shared administrator in a home is now able to pair and add matter accessories. That's something we've had for the last beta notes as well. So they haven't updated this and it seems like it's a very small update due to iOS 17, probably taking most of those features. Now, as far as overall performance, well, it seems to be pretty good so far. The phone is not getting warm at all. It's nice and cool on the back. No issues there. That includes the iPhone 11 after I installed it after running benchmarks though, with Geekbench, it did warm up a little, but that's normal when the processor works a little bit more and overall performance seems to be fine. So if we go into the app library and scroll, ProMotion is nice and fast. If we do that on iPhone 11 without ProMotion, it seems to be fine. Scrolling through, you'll see nice and smooth. If we go into Apple Music, give it a moment to load here off Wi-Fi, it loads fast and works properly. Same is true here. So it seems to be working as you would expect. Overall heat of the device, like I said, is nice and and cold. So we'll take a closer look at that with the follow-up video later this weekend. And if you're wondering about battery life, let's take a look at that. Now, as far as overall battery life, let's go into settings. We'll go to battery, battery health and charging, and you'll see I'm at 97% battery health. You can see the actual cycle count here with coconut battery that just shows that I'm using it regularly. And this is actually depleting faster than it did last year. And my wife's on public versions charging the same and has more cycles and actually still has a hundred percent battery capacity. So the only difference there is the betas and I'm not too concerned about it. 80% after two years is normal. As far as battery life, well, it will take a few days to measure this. So be sure to check back in the follow-up. But as far as today, I have three hours and 44 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 31 minutes of screen idle time. And I've used about 40% of the battery. If we take a look at yesterday, I didn't have good battery life at all. I only used almost three hours of screen active time and was at about 60% usage. So it hasn't been great for me. It seems like it hasn't been great for a while. At least for me, I've tried to change a bunch of settings and even background app refresh. Lots of things are off, but it still seems to be a little bit poor. It could be because it's the car keys, maybe trying to talk to the different vehicles. And that seems to use a lot as well, but let me know your experience with it in the comments below. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.5 beta four, I would say if you want to try it, you can, there's not a ton of new features in it yet, so you could try it out. But if you're trying to improve battery life, I'd probably just hold off until the RC or release version. And speaking of iOS 16.5, I think we'll get the release candidate next. We don't know that for sure, but next week seems likely where we, we would have an RC version and then a final release, probably the following week, usually on a Monday. So maybe the 15th we'd have that. It's hard to say. And then we'd move on to iOS 16.6. We've seen that testing in the code and different analytics on websites. And then of course, on June 5th, we'll have iOS 17 beta one. So we'll have iOS 16.6 and 17 beta one betas going on at the same time. 
That seems to make sense. That's what we have every year, all the way up until September, where we have a final release of iOS 17 to the public. If Apple continues to do what they've done every year, it will come out a little bit before the iPhone 15. Now, as far as future updates, all of those features will be in iOS 17. We keep hearing more and more with new health app redesigns, better organized app libraries, Apple Music lyrics on the lock screen, and much more. We're expecting quite a few changes, especially with the control center, so hopefully we'll see those, but we'll have to wait a few more weeks to see that from Apple. But be sure to check back for that. As far as benchmarks, let's take a look at that. For single core, we have 2,513, 6,166 for multi-core. Compared to what we had with the previous version, we're a little bit down, but that shouldn't really affect performance. 2,525 compared to 2,513 and 6,253 compared to 6,166. Typically that small of a change doesn't make too much of a difference and it could actually bump back up a little bit later if I ran it again once it finishes processing everything in the backgrounds. And so that's everything for iOS 16.5 beta 4. Hopefully we get a release candidate next with a public release with hopefully some more features and changes. But again, most of those changes should be in iOS 7. Let me know if you found anything else, though, I haven't mentioned in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>